Hello everybody and welcome to another episode and in today's video I want to talk to you guys a little bit about differentials. I want to explain to you how a differential works as well as explain the differences between different types of differentials and how to choose one to fit your needs based off of what you plan to do with your car. By the end of this video, I want you guys to be able to make a smart decision uh, when you're picking out an aftermarket differential to try and improve your car's handling um, and avoid the mistakes that I've made in the past when I've been choosing differentials for my car. Differentials are actually a fairly old piece of technology. They've been around since the 1820s. Um, the first differential ever invented was very similar in style to the open differentials that you'll see in most cars today. The idea behind it is that we want to be able to power both of our wheels with the engine to get the car moving, but we want them to also be able to spin at slightly different rates um, because when a vehicle such as a car is going around a corner, the inside tire is going to actually travel a shorter distance than the outside tire. But if the wheels are forced to rotate at the same speed, this would be problematic because they're having to do the same number of rotations, but if they're traveling different distances, it means that at least one of the tires has to be slipping. And this is bad because it's going to reduce the life expectancy of the tire as it's getting dragged on the road. Um, it's going to end up wearing the tire out. Um, it's also going to reduce your grip slightly when going around the corner. Um, if one of the tires is slipping, it's not gripping the road effectively, so you can't go around the corner as fast. Um, and that tire slipping also kind of hurts how smooth the ride is, especially going around corners. Um, so being able to allow the wheels to spin at different rates but still be powered by the engine um, is very important in allowing the car to operate smoothly and effectively. Uh, and how differentials do this is going to vary depending on the type of differential. So we're going to go over the different types of diffs that you might see in some cars today and the advantages and disadvantages of both. The first type of differential that I'm going to talk to you guys about is the open differential. This is the most common differential that you'll find in the majority of cars today. It's called open because there's generally an opening in the housing here which allows you to see the inner workings of the differential itself. Um, in this particular open diff we have uh, four different gears here. Two gears on the side are attached to the half axles which uh, are in turn attached to the wheels and that's what drives um, your tires. Um, and then we have uh, another two gears here which are fixed to the differential housing by this beam that we see in the center so that when the differential housing is driven via a rain gear which isn't uh, currently attached but when the, when the differential housing is driven those two gears attached to the housing are going to be forced to drive the two gears on the side which are attached to the axles and that allows you to power the wheels. But because of this gearing system, as you can see here, the two different axles are actually going to be allowed to drive at different rates. Uh, and this allows the wheels to be able to spin uh, at different distances going around a corner while still being driven. Um, this type of design is most common simply because of its simplicity. Uh, relative to some of the other designs we're going to look at, this kind of four gear system um, is fairly inexpensive. Um, this is also a fairly lightweight diff coming in at about 15 pounds. The clutch type diff that we'll look at a little bit later is closer to 25. Um, so it's a lighter weight diff which is kind of good for fuel efficiency, keeping the weight of the vehicle down. Again, inexpensive to design um, and that's why it's the most common type of differential that is used in cars today. Um, but there is one setback for this type of differential which is um, if you want any type of performance out of it, whether it's on a track, drag racing, drifting, going off-road, um, if one of the tires begins to slip, if you lose traction because you're going too fast or you're trying to drift, all of the power is going to be sent to the one wheel that is allowed to spin and this causes you to lose grip on the track. It means that if you're, for instance, off-roading, um, if you get one of your wheels stuck in the mud, it's just going to want to spin that one wheel and you're not going to be able to power the other wheel that actually has the traction. So the diffs that we're getting ready to look at implement different ways of being able to lock the wheels. So that way you're able to send torque to the wheel that is actually getting traction and that's attached to the ground. Um, but how the differentials do this is going to be different. So the next type of differential we're going to talk about is the welded diff. Now welded diff isn't technically a differential by definition. It's more so a modification that people will do to their open differentials. Um, when people want to drag race or drift and they don't really want to use their car on the road, what they will often do is they'll take their soft open differential in the car and they will end up welding the gears together. That way they're not actually allowed to spin independently. Instead, they're simply going to be locked uh, to spin at the same rate, which means that the only thing that's going to happen is when the differential is powered, it's going to want to turn both of those wheels, but the wheels won't actually be able to spin independently when going around a corner. This type of application is really only useful if you are planning on drag racing where you're not going to be taking any turns. 
Uh, it's also sometimes done for drifting uh, because it means the wheels lock up or they're basically locked up all the time. So you lose traction pretty quickly going around a corner when you're trying to give it power, uh, which allows you to break into a drift pretty easy. Some people will also do this for off-roading because it means that you're going to always be able to apply power to both of the wheels so you'll get pretty good traction. Um, but this type of differential, um, welding your diff together, uh, is something I really only recommend if you are only going to be doing your uh, driving on a track. Um, if you're going to be driving around the streets, do not do this. Um, locking your wheels together just means you are going to be dragging tire everywhere. Um, you'll leave tire marks pretty much everywhere you go, parking lots, around corners and things. Um, and it's just really a, a big headache to have to deal with. Uh, means you get a lot of wheel chirp as the wheels are chirping around. Um, and it's just, it's generally not good for the car as well, for the CV joints and things. Um, so welding your differential is something I really only recommend for drift, for drag racing, uh, maybe even for off-roading. Um, it's a really low cost solution because you can basically just take the OEM part that you have and weld those gears together. Um, but other than that, if you're planning on doing any street driving, you do not want to weld your diff up. Um, something else that's used, it's a similar style, is, is something called a spool differential, where instead of welding your gears together, the differential literally just has a, a bar that connects the two axles together. Um, it's, it operates similarly to most welded diffs. Um, so yeah, that's the welded differential. Uh, again, really not used for street, only used for, for drifting, sometimes drag racing. Uh, but there are ways to be able to lock your differential uh, when you need it to, but also be allowed to drive the wheels independently when you're, for instance, on the street. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at some of those designs now. The next family of differentials I'm going to talk to you guys about are limited slip differentials, of which there are a few different designs. Um, a limited slip differential is different from the differentials we already talked about um, in that it allows the wheels to spin at different rates, uh, like the original differential was intended to. Uh, when not a lot of torque is being applied to the wheels. So under most city driving, when you're going around corners and things, you're not really pushing the car a ton. You're just wanting to get from point A to point B. Uh, and so because you're not sending a lot of torque to the differential, it is going to act like an open diff and it will uh, allow you to take the corner much more smoothly. However, when you're trying to apply a ton of power to the differential, so let's say that um, you are trying to take a corner really fast and you don't want one of your wheels to slip, um, let's say you're trying to get a good start off a line at a drag strip and you don't want to do a peg leg burnout with one of your wheels. Um, you want the wheels to be locked together. Um, or if you're off-roading and you don't want that one wheel to spin. We want the car, when we suddenly apply a ton of torque from the engine, uh, to suddenly lock those wheels. And that's what a limited slip differential does. Depending on the type of diff, uh, under the circumstances that I just described, um, the wheels will be able to lock accordingly when you want them to, but also be allowed to spin at different rates when you're just trying to drive around the city and you're not really pushing the car. So the first type of limited slip differential that we're going to look at is the clutch type limited slip differential, also sometimes known as the posi track diff. This design was conceived back in 1949 and the idea is you want to take the similar design of the open diff where you've got a series of spider gears that allows the wheels to be driven at different rates, but you want to add some clutch packs on either side that are attached to your half axles and those clutch packs are going to be able to use friction to lock it with the housing and allow the wheels to spin at the same rate um, when you want to be able to get a ton of traction in like a race setting. Um, if you look closely in there, and it may be difficult to see on camera now, but there is a pinion and on either side of those pinions there is a pressure plate and whenever a ton of torque is being applied to the housing, whether it be under acceleration or under braking, that pinion is going to be forced up against those pressure plates and those pressure plates are in turn going to be forced against the clutch packs and is what allows uh, the half axles to be locked up uh, with the desired effect that we were just talking about. Clutch type differentials like this have the advantage in that they're highly customizable and can be configured in a one way, one and a half way or two way format. Uh, when I say one way or two way, what I mean is how the wheels lock up under acceleration as well as braking. So one way differential only locks up when you're accelerating. A two-way differential will equally lock up when you're braking. And a one and a half way has a less aggressive lock up under braking uh, while still locking up the same way when you're accelerating. Uh, these behaviors are desirable depending on the type of driving that you're doing. Two-way differentials are usually desired for drifting because whenever you're coming up on a corner, you want to be able to hit the brakes and have those wheels locked up so you can easily put the car into a drift uh, when you want it to. One and a half ways are generally more desirable for uh, track use because you don't really need that much aggressive lockup because you still want the wheels to grip when going around the corner. And one-way differentials, uh, one-way clutch type diffs, 
are generally used uh, as a more inexpensive option for um, whenever you're buying a clutch type diff. Um, so they can be easily customized depending on the type of driving that you want to do. Um, they can also be configured so that the amount of like preload on the clutch packs can be adjusted so that you can change how aggressively the lockup happens. Um, this type of differential I really only consider good if you are really serious about tracking or drifting um, your car. Uh, but if you are primarily just using it on the streets it can be a bit of a pain. Because of the clutch packs inside of these diffs uh, they make like a ton of noise. Um, this is something that I was able to record on a previous video of mine. And it just caused me a lot of headaches because I got tired of listening to those clutch packs rattling around all the time. It was actually really loud and could be heard across parking lots. Um, that is going to be different depending on the manufacturer of the diff. Some manufacturers are probably going to be quieter than others. Uh, and you can also mitigate the amount of noise uh, using some friction modifiers within the differential oil. But generally speaking, clutch type differentials, um, I recommend if you are planning on doing a lot of heavy track or drift use, maybe even drag racing. Um, but if you are primarily just on the streets and only taking it out on the track occasionally, the clutch type differential is probably not going to be the best for you. Um, especially because um, some types of diffs, like the Tomy diff here, uh, will also want to lock up aggressively when you're trying to take a really tight corner, uh, which is just really frustrating and it's why I ended up switching to the next type of differential that we're going to talk about, which is the ATB or Automatic Torque Biasing Limited Slip Diff. All right, so slight change of scenery here because it was getting kind of hot in my garage. Um, plus, this gives me a chance to tell you guys about the diff that I recently installed in my car, which is the Automatic Torque Biasing Diff, or ATB Diff. This type of differential is fairly complex, and I could take a whole other video just to describe how it works. But the basic gist of it is these types of differentials have a gearing system in them that allows the torque to be biased towards one wheel or the other, depending on which one has uh, the most traction. In the case of the Quaife differential, which I recently installed on my vehicle, it uses a set of helical gears, floating helical gears, um, that are within the differential housing and are allowed to slide back and forth based off of which wheel is beginning to spin a little bit due to loss of traction. Um, this type of gear is really nice for anybody that daily drives their car at all because it acts like an open differential in normal driving, which means you don't get a lot of wheel hop, there's not a ton of noise, the diff's fairly quiet. Uh, but under heavy loads, whenever you're really getting on it, like in a track for instance, um, it does lock the wheels up and allows you to get grip to both of the wheels without slipping. Um, it means when you are getting on a start, when you're drag racing for instance, when you're trying to launch the vehicle, both of those wheels lock up, you get traction to both of them and it really allows you to launch off the line fairly quickly. This differential is also fairly low maintenance. There's pretty much no wear and tear on these diffs. Unlike the clutch type differentials where you gotta change the diff oil every few thousand miles just due to the clutch dust that's building up in the housing, this differential uh, has almost no wear and tear. You really only need to follow the regular maintenance and change the oil out every 50,000 miles or so. So it's just much nicer not having to maintenance it. It's a quieter diff, much nicer to daily drive, and it's really on the top of my uh, recommendation list. I mean, I installed one in my car myself uh, because these diffs are just so nice to drive under normal circumstances. So the last type of limited slip differential design that I want to talk to you guys about is the viscous limited slip differential. Uh, this is the same type of differential that you'll find on the Nismo edition and Sport editions of the 370Z, uh, the car that I have. The viscous limited slip diff works in that it has this fluid that's within the diff housing, which when heated causes friction in between some clutch plates and the housing itself. It kind of works similar to a clutch type diff, but the clutch packs aren't necessarily directly engaging with the housing. Um, but instead, the fluid itself is what's causing that engagement. This type of differential is um, fairly inexpensive compared to some of the other type of diffs out there, uh, compared to, for instance, automatic torque biasing diffs or clutch type diffs. Um, but they also have the problem in that the lockup feature itself is fairly slow. You can actually get a ton of wheel spin before these diffs actually begin to lock up because the way it works is the fluid actually has to get heated up before that locking mechanism kind of really engages. So the lockup can be pretty slow and that means you don't really get a ton of response from that differential. Um, and the lockup is also not as aggressive. The friction between the viscous fluid and the clutch packs is just not as aggressive as you would get with a proper clutch type differential. 
So these do make for a nice upgrade if you are going from an open differential, but really there are better diffs out there that you should probably consider when you're looking at upgrading to a limited slip diff. All right, so I've explained how each of the different types of differentials work, um, but maybe you're still having trouble trying to decide what type of differential is best for you. So let me go through each of the different designs again and kind of explain um, where they might be best suited and why you might want to upgrade the differential that you already have. So the open differential, as I said, is really best for stock vehicles. If you really don't care to get any extra performance out of your car, um, if you're not planning on tracking it, if you're not planning on taking it to a drag strip, um, then really there's no reason to upgrade these. Open differentials are very smoothly operating. They're very quiet um, and for the road, they pretty much work in every single circumstance. You know, you don't have to struggle with any noise or anything coming from the diff. Um, so unless you're trying to get some extra performance out of your car, there's really no reason to upgrade. The viscous limited slip differential is again, a common limited slip diff that you might find in a lot of cars. These are also very smoothly operating. They're really nice to drive. Um, they give you the little bit of lockup feature that you need to get a little more performance out of them. Um, but they also don't lock up as aggressively as other diffs. Um, but the reason why you might want to get one of these is um, it comes as a cheap upgrade if you're coming from an open differential. You can actually buy a viscous limited slip differential with the housing and everything for this car for like 500 bucks used. Um, so it makes for a really cheap uh, budget upgrade to your car. Um, but if you're really trying to maximize performance, it doesn't make the most sense. Because of the fact that it doesn't lock up aggressively, because of the delay in the lockup, which can cause some uh, issues with response from the differential, um, it's really not the best diff to upgrade to. But if you're on a budget, it really makes a lot of sense to upgrade to it from an open diff if you're planning on taking it to a track. So the automatic torque biasing diff is really the one that's at the top of my recommendation list. For anybody that drives their car on the road and is also planning on doing a little bit of track uh, work, this is really the best diff for you. Um, if you do any sort of daily driving, this diff is just quiet, it's smoothly operating. Um, I came from a clutch type differential which made a ton of clutch shatter noise. It was really a headache to deal with. This differential is quiet. I haven't heard a single bit of noise coming from it at all. It still locks up when you want it to. You can still do two wheel burnouts if you want. Um, it launches really nicely. Um, you can still steer it with the throttle as you're going around a corner, which is a characteristic you want to see from torque biasing diffs or any type of limited slip differential. Um, so it still locks up fairly nicely, but in parking lots, it's smooth operating. You're not dragging tires. It's just really, really nice to drive. If you guys are planning on upgrading to a limited slip diff and you do any amount of daily driving on the roads, I highly recommend getting an automatic torque biasing diff. They're just so nice. The only downside is they can get a little bit expensive compared to some of the other designs, but I promise you the extra few hundred that you might spend on a torque biasing diff versus, for instance, a clutch type diff is really going to be worth it. Um, one small side subject here, um, so comparing different brands, uh, the two biggest brands of ATB diffs for the 370Z is the Quaif diff and the Wave Track diff. The Wave Track is special in that it has an additional piece within it that allows the wheels to lock up uh, aggressively when you're going around a corner and giving it a ton of throttle. The Quaif diff is known to sometimes slip and cause the torque to go to the wheel if you kind of get it uh, in the air a little bit going around a corner um, really tight. That wheel that kind of lifts off a little bit, if it loses traction completely, can cause it to spin. Um, this is the one downside to the Quaif diff. And what I found was that the Wave Track diff, at least for the 370Z, is almost exactly the same price, but it has an additional locking mechanism within that diff, which prevents the one wheel spin uh, if you happen to lose traction on that side. Um, so if I was recommending diffs for the 370, I would highly recommend the Wave Track over the Quaif. Unfortunately, I didn't know about the Wave Track, or sorry, I, I knew about the Wave Track differential, but I didn't realize that they were the exact same price. I really didn't do a good price comparison here. Uh, normally, the Wave Track diff for most people is more expensive by at least 50%. Um, so if I were choosing between the two, in most cases, what I would tell you guys is um, unless you're really pushing for that additional second on your lap time, the Quaif diff, assuming that you can save a lot of money and do the Quaif diff over the, uh, the Wave Track, would be the better bet. For the 370, however, because the prices are almost exactly the same, I'd recommend the Wave Track diff just because it has that additional locking mechanism in it and because they're about the same price. So the clutch type differential is one that I would only recommend if you're primarily doing track use, whether it be some sort of autocross or you're doing drifting or drag racing. The clutch type diff can be used on the street, but it's just really difficult to deal with. Um, the clutch packs make an extremely loud noise if you've got them disengaged. Um, they can actually be heard all the way across a Walmart parking lot with my old Tomy diff. 
Um, so it's just a complete headache to deal with. Plus when you're doing like a tight turn, um, say you're going right from a red light or you're trying to pull out of a parking space, you'll get a ton of wheel chirp as well. So it was just a complete headache. It wore on the tires. It's a ton of maintenance because you got to change the oil every few thousand miles. So unless you're primarily doing track, I recommend sticking with the ATB diff. It is a little more expensive than a clutch type diff, but it's well worth it. Um, with the clutch type diffs, uh, you will get, uh, as I said, if you're trying to maximize your performance on the track, they're a bit better because the lockup is a bit more aggressive. Um, it's pretty much instantaneous. Um, to kind of go through some of the different diffs, uh, so the Tomy diff is pretty much the least expensive option, option for clutch type diffs. It is about 900 bucks, which is a few hundred less than some of the other clutch types you can find out there, such as Kaz. Um, so it's a really nice budget diff if you're wanting to do, uh, for instance, drifting and things. Um, some of the more expensive diffs, like the Kaz diff, um, are probably a little bit nicer. They might be a little bit more quiet than the Tomy. I haven't actually driven one, so I don't know what it's like, but I imagine it's still gonna be pretty noisy and clunky. Um, so just kind of understand that about clutch type diffs, primarily for track use. Do yourself a favor and don't pick one of these up if you do any sort of street driving. Just go for the automatic torque biasing diff. Anyways, guys, that's my two cents on different types of differential designs. I hope this video was informative and can help you pick out a differential yourself. Do the research and don't make the mistake that I did and buy the wrong differential. The Tomy diff was something that was just a headache for a whole year. Um, I was extremely happy to upgrade to the Quaif diff. This differential has just been so much nicer, smoother operating, still locks up like it's supposed to. So it's really important to make sure you do the research before you buy the diff. And I, I still messed up and not buying the Wave Track. I didn't realize that it was the same price as the Quaif diff. Um, but again, research is extremely important. Um, so I hope that this video helps you choose the differential that you're going to upgrade in your vehicle. So thank you guys for watching once again. Um, I hope you found the video informative. Give it the thumbs up if you did. Like and subscribe down below for more videos. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later. You